Hi, I'm Mrs. Wilhelm, and I'm going to talk to you today about Eric Carle. Eric Carle is known as a picture writer. Eric Carle creates books that he writes and he does the pictures. He's the illustrator as well. The thing about Eric Carle, even though his books are fiction books, he makes his books about real things and he includes real facts in his books. He also does his art as scientific art, which means that they look like they really would in real life, the way that he dry, draws them. He does change the color a little bit, however, and it's the color and the way he puts his picture books together that I'm gonna focus on in our lesson today. Here's a drawing he did of himself, Eric Carle, and one of the things when he's doing his art is he always wears a kind of a painter's smock. And this lesson can get a little messy, so if you like, you for sure want to roll up your sleeves and you could put on some kind of smock or don't wear your fanciest clothes to painting class. All right, Eric Carl paints pictures with so much color and pattern. And you know, he creates his own paper to make his pictures, and then he cuts up that paper into different shapes, pieces them together, and that's called collage. So that's what I want to talk about today. Here's a collage that I once did of a bee. Now you can tell it's a bee, but it has lots of different paper that have been cut out and glued together. I'm going to show you some Eric Carl books right now that are about real things. And I'm going to also show you some paper that you could see how those papers could be cut up in collage to be turned into Eric Carl's style of work. Many of the papers I'm going to show you were actually made by kindergartners. You know this book, The Very Hungry Caterpillar. Well, look at this paper here. You could imagine how Eric Carl cut all those ovals out, out of a paper like this that he created himself. Here inside the story, of course, is the beautiful butterfly that appears. Look at all the different types of patterns that he created on paper to turn into a butterfly. And here's one sample of what somebody did. A kindergartner had that idea. So what they did was they took some paint paint it on the paper, and then add some other colors on top of that. I have a story that you may recognize if you're familiar with Eric Carl books. It's called The Very Busy Spider. And you can imagine that this paper right here could have been something that you could use in creating the spider. Now look at how tricky this is, that there's a grid pattern in there. You can put paint on something like this, this little strawberry basket, put paint on, and turn into a grid like that. One time, somebody went to do some circles on paper. Look at that. So you could put paint on a lid and attach it, or even a hair tie would work. One of my favorite Eric Carl books is The Grouchy Later Ladybug. And here, it's just like big strokes of a brush that turned, that made that look of that paper there. Another favorite one is, which I read to my class, is the honey bee and the robber. So the stripes of the bee could be made with some paper like this. And one way that you can do that is to take a fork through your paper. Just like that, I love how these papers look here. Other ones done with a fork. And this one, instead of just going up and down, they went swirling around. Now, what if I wanted to add some more dots? Somebody did some painted dots on this paper, but say I wanted to make them all the same size. I can take one of the types of paints that Eric Carl uses is acrylic paint. You could take acrylic paint, you can put a little bit on a lid, dip it in a 
pencil. Look at that. And then you've got dots of color that you can get right off the eraser of your pencil. That would be really good if you were going to do a story about a ladybug or draw, um, paint a picture about a ladybug. Those would make really even dots. One of my favorite stories too is the very quiet cricket. And look at that simple paper with just color, but with a pattern going through it, maybe with a fork. And inside, look at how his end papers look in books. And you can take the end of your paintbrush and just go through paint, spread it around like that, and that's how you get that look. So I like to demonstrate for you using watercolor to do Eric Carl style art. And one of the things you're going to see in your lesson plan is about creating some June bugs. So you can print off this, talks about the bugs, and you can look through these as parts of a bug that you can make papers for, cut apart, and then glue them back down in a collage style. I was making some papers and I was thinking, oh, I need a flower. So I just put a lot of crayon marks. You're gonna see later how I cut out a flower from this. And paint, different colors of paint. I wanted to do a bee, so I was thinking, oh, bees have stripes. So first I took a black crayon and I did these zigzag lines. Then I went through with some yellow crayon and then I painted with brown over that. So just so you can watch me do it, here is a little easel here, and I have some green lines, some yellow circles. Maybe I'm gonna add some dashes of blue in here too. So I just take a crayon, draw on a plain white sheet of construction paper, and then I'm gonna take some watercolor, which is hiding back here, Okay, <laughs> I've got just a set that I could find at the grocery store of watercolor paints. And look at how used my set is. I do a lot with blue. And so you can see that the blue is almost used up. I just dip my brush in some water. And now I'm going to paint green over this. Even though I have a lot of green, let's just see how it shows up. You can still see the yellow through there. You can see the light green. Let me add another color now because Eric Carl said how much he loves colors. I'm going to put yellow over here. And my favorite color, blue, over here. So after I let that dry, I can cut it up and turn it into something for my Eric Carl art. So I have a piece here that I was working on, thinking about those June bugs. I had first did a drawing. There's sunflower, I know you all know how to do sunflowers. I drew in some butterflies, little ladybugs, and I had drawn in here a bee on a flower, and I'm adding leaf and the sun. So I'm gonna keep working on this by taking my painted papers. I've done a bunch of painted papers and I'm gonna look at it and think, well, I do wanna have it be some scientific art like Eric Carl. So I did use some real yellow colors in on my B and here I'm gonna add a leaf. So I had this paper right here and I cut out this leaf shape, put a little glue on the back, and I'm gonna add it right in that spot where I said, I want a leaf there. That's where I want that leaf right there. I'm gonna put it in, and it's okay if it didn't match exactly the leaf I had drawn in there. And I press it down. I have my collage leaf made 
from the paper that I made, I'm going to keep on working and adding more insects, flowers, and then when I'm all done, I can go back to my watercolor paint, go back to my blue, because I just remember I just love blue, and I can come back in here and I can add some background color so that my art has background all throughout the picture. I can also take a pen and add some action marks. You know what that is, right? If this, if this bee is flying, there would be little marks that go like that to indicate that the wings are moving. And then after you're done, make sure that you sign your name somewhere on your art because you truly are an artist. All right, my friends, thank you so much for listening to this study on Eric Carl Collage Art. Bye-bye.